Some people. Uh... This is a KMTV Action 3 News breaking news update on the standoff and SWAT situation at 140th and Blondo. We are about to get an update from Tom Wheeler. Yeah, Douglas County Chief Deputy Tom Wheeler is about to give this update. We know uh, the person who had been holed up all day. Let's listen in. I can report that the standoff is over. Uh, the suspect in this case has died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. His name is Kenneth Clark, age 45. I can also confirm that we have two other victims inside the residence. Both those victims are deceased, not releasing their names at this time. Uh, the standoff lasted over 11 hours. Uh, we had negotiations ongoing throughout the day with the suspect. Uh, our negotiations broke down. Around 10 o'clock, we told him that we were going to introduce gas into the residence and that he needed to come out. Uh, we gave him warning, uh, ample warning that it was coming, and uh, he refused, still refused to come out. Gas was introduced into the house. And a short time later, we heard a, what we thought was a gunshot. Uh, we sent a robot inside the residence, and they found uh, Mr. Clark deceased. When was he? Sorry. Uh, I have with me Captain Steve Glant with the tactical unit and Captain Eric Sellers with Douglas County Sheriff Patrol. Uh, this operation was in coordination with the Omaha Police Department, who assisted us on scene. Uh, we thank them for their efforts. I'll take any questions you might have. When was that last contact with him, do you know? Our last contact with him was just before 10 p.m. Uh, we told him that at 10 p.m., if he didn't turn himself, come out, we were going to introduce gas into the house. Do you know what the relationship is between the other two bodies that you found and this in Mr. Park? This is still under investigation. We believe this is a domestic situation uh, involving uh, Mr. Clark and his ex-girlfriend. We're not releasing the names of the two deceased inside the residence. Uh, we'll have an update on those individuals tomorrow. How would you describe the conversations with him throughout the day? Um, had, did they change? Did they have an even tone? They were up and down all day. He was all over the map between uh, sobbing, uh, crying, praying. Uh, it, it, several times he said he was going to come out, and of course he never did. It was. It was virtually up and down the entire day for 11 hours. Can you describe the woman who was released from the home, um, getting her out? Obviously, she was safe. Is she still safe? She is safe. Uh, she was taken to the hospital to be medically cleared. She is safe, and we are interviewing her now. Who may be, have you determined who made the original 911 call yet, how that all played out in this event? No, that's under investigation. The original call came out near the area of 150th and Blondo. Uh, it was a cell call. Uh, it was uh, pinged to a cell phone tower in the area. Uh, we don't believe that anything occurred in that area. We believe that everything occurred inside this residence. Do you have the genders of the deceased? Two males. Two males. Okay. Throughout the day, did the suspect stay in the same location inside the house or did he move? Uh, he moved throughout the house, uh, several locations. And it confirmed his diet does live there. Th this is his residence, yes. Was power ever shut off to the house? No, we did not shut off power. You guys learned that the two were deceased in the home and that's why you eventually fired the gas into the home? It was never confirmed for us until we actually got in there. We had uh, we had information that there was two individuals in the house. However, we, we did not know their condition. Aside from sobbing and praying, did he say anything to you? I don't know that I have that information right now. How did the woman get out of the house? He released her. Our hostage negotiator did an excellent job and convincing him to release her from the residence, which he ultimately did. Was he, when did you reach the decision that you would have to go through the, you know, the, the gas to try and get him out? We came to the conclusion that uh, negotiations had failed. Uh, we had uh, diligently tried uh, throughout the day 10, 11 hours of negotiation, and uh, it, it came to an impasse. He wasn't going to come out. Did you know he was armed, and if so, with what? He was armed. We believe there was a handgun and a rifle, although the, the rest of that is under investigation. The communication, was that back phone that we've talked about previous on previous occasions, or do you know how that communication was established with him? I believe we were communicating through his cell phone. Yeah, okay. Can you speak a little bit about just the length of this standoff and the weather conditions for law enforcement officers involved? 
Obviously, it's uh, it's freezing out here. Uh, law enforcement is set up for hours. Uh, our goal was to peacefully resolve this, and uh, when it became apparent that that our best efforts were not going to bring him out, we had to tactically try to force him out by introducing tear gas into the residence. Does Mr. Clark have any type of past or anything you guys knew? I don't have any other calls to this location. Uh, his pass will be under investigation as well. How do you follow him or track him? You know, you said he was in multiple locations throughout the home all day. Um, there were obviously other people in there. How, how do you keep tabs on where he is? Is it by his word? It's a constant communication with our negotiators. In this case, uh, we were able to speak with him throughout the day and keep track of where he was moving essentially by what he was telling us and by what we could see from the exterior. How difficult was it for your guys with the help of the It has been very difficult. They have to rotate uh, our ESU people in and out to, uh, to keep them warm. As you can imagine, uh, you've been out here all day and uh, I'm sure you're quite cold. Uh, they've been out here for 10, 11 hours and it's, uh, it's taken its toll. When did the relationship with the suspect uh, with his girlfriend and recently or today? Well, that's that's unclear. She had come back to the residence today to collect her belongings, and uh, that's when the incident took place. Collect your belongings to move out? It appears. When will this neighborhood kind of be 100% back to normal? Well, we have our crime scene investigators en route. Uh, we have a homicide investigation that uh, will likely take us throughout the night. It just depends on how long it takes to process the scene inside. Do you know how long the two in the home were dead? We do not know. That is under investigation. How long had the two been together previous to this? Are you still determining that? That's still under investigation. Did those bodies play a factor into his sort of response, mental response? I believe it did. Uh, with his uh, crying and sobbing throughout the day, uh, his praying, uh, that gave us indication that, uh, that there was trouble. Was he intoxicated? That's under investigation. I don't have any reason to believe that he was, but we don't know at this time. Where do you guys find the bodies at? Inside the residence and in the basement, in the first floor in the basement. When you know you have possible other hostages and stuff inside a home, how does that switch your approach when you're trying to get him to come out? Yeah, everybody's life is important to us. Uh, our hope all along was to resolve it peacefully. Uh, certainly, if we believe that there are hostages inside, we take that under consideration. We have a, a hostage negotiator and tactical team that assess it minute by minute to make the best decision possible. How is the woman when she was let go? And she was... She's distraught. Uh, she had been through quite a bit, as you can imagine. Uh, we're still uh, interviewing her to, to get as many details as we can. Was she able to give you any information that would kind of benefit the rest of the, the way this played out? She was able to give us some information that, uh, that benefited us, but, but in the end it came down to this individual uh, surrendering peacefully. Uh, he chose not to. Do you rely solely on the hostage negotiator, or do you bring in folks, family members, possibly people he knew to speak with him? We, we try all kinds of tactics. I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, certainly we throughout the day we tried various methods to, to get him to come out. Were the victims related to the woman? Are you able to tell us anything like that yet? I can't confirm that. Where was his body found? His body was found in an upstairs bedroom. Was there at any point any gunfire exchange with law enforcement? I'm sorry? Gunfire with law no. enforcement? No shots were fired uh, at law enforcement. All right, guys, I appreciate your time. We'll, uh, we'll have uh, more updates tomorrow, uh, and we'll send out a press release to do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Douglas County Sheriff's Department Chief Deputy Tom Wheeler uh, briefing the media on what has been a deadly end to the work week in Omaha. Three people are dead, including a gunman and two other men. Uh, that hostage situation and standoff came to a dramatic end just after 10 tonight. According to uh, Chief Deputy Wheeler, negotiations failed. At 10 o'clock, police told the man who was armed with what they believed to be two guns 
uh, that they were going to fire in tear gas if he did not come out and surrender. He says they gave him ample warning. They sent the tear gas in. They sent a robot in. Moments later, uh, the man took his own life, shooting himself in an upstairs bedroom. When police entered the residence, they found two other men dead. One on the first floor, another in the basement. So at this point, what we know is three people are dead. The gunman who held police at bay for nearly 12 hours since before 12 noon today. Two other people who were in the house with him. We do know that one woman is safe. She was held hostage. We had video of it throughout the day right here on KMTV uh, that the hostage negotiator was able to convince uh, the man with the gun, 45-year-old Kenneth Clark, uh, to let the woman go, believed to be his ex-girlfriend. From there, the standoff situation ensued. And more on that, it does seem to be a domestic violence case. The woman, the ex-girlfriend, they believe, uh, came to the home, the ho house of Kenneth Clark, to collect some of her belongings. We saw in some pictures and some video, I believe you can even see there, there was a U-Haul truck there. She came to collect her belongings. It is understood she came with some men to collect her belongings. Uh, the chief deputy would not say the relationship between the woman and those two men. During the course of the negotiations, he did release that woman. That woman has now been talking to police, being interviewed by police. Uh, we were asked at one point, or he, he was asked at one point um, whether they knew when these two men were killed. And his answer to that was they didn't know until they went in. They had wondered, they had speculated, they knew there were two people inside. They did not know their condition until they went inside and they confirmed their worst fears, truly. Chief Deputy Wheeler says a homicide investigation is now underway. Uh, here is a live look at the scene. Uh, to the residents, to the folks who live in the area of 140th and Blondo, south of Champions Run. Uh, we want to let you know uh, that Chief Deputy Wheeler said the standoff is now over. The danger in your neighborhood is over. You are now safe. Uh, we know uh, that earlier in the day, uh, Wheeler had said to stay in your homes, uh, that this was a dangerous situation, and he did not want anybody in the vicinity coming out because the man was armed with two guns. Uh, he was sobbing, as we heard. Uh, he was praying. Uh, and, and, and he simply was not going to come out at that point. Uh, but if you live in the area of 140th and Blondo, uh, here's the map right here. Uh, the emergency is over, the standoff is over, and the danger is over tonight. The investigation now, though, will continue as they look into the history of Cl Kenneth Clark and they continue to talk to this woman about why he did this tonight. You have been watching KMTV Action 3 News, a special report on this breaking news update. Good night.